um, contracts, three years, um, so one of those things we never expected you to leave. Was there yeah. any thought about um, going three years or even maybe a little bit shorter? Um, no, not at all. I've uh, made my intentions clear to the club for, a, I guess, ever since I've been here that um, I love the club. I feel like I uh, I owe them a lot for the opportunity they gave me from uh, when I was 18 years old. I've been lucky enough to grow up loving footy, dreamt about playing, and I got a chance. So I'm uh, indebted to the Adelaide Footy Club and feel like I, I owe it to, to um, repay them and the faith they showed in me and to be offered uh, you know, a three-year deal. I, I jumped at the chance to... to Hopefully, stay remain a one club player. Quite a few blokes are getting three year deals here with Daniel Tarver and Dallas. Yep. Um, I think Richard Douglas got one last year. Is that the most encouraging thing that you see in up of players that can be here for an extended crack at the play? Yeah, that's what we need, and that's, um, I guess, what the group can see lies ahead for us as a football club. You need a core group of players to stay together for a period of time, to, to gel together, to, to get that chemistry amongst the playing group. and. We've seen that develop over the last couple of years now and it's really important that the likes of Sam Jacobs, Daniel Talia, Richie Douglas stay around for the years to come and, and they've got, I dare say, no intentions of going anywhere else to be honest because they see what um, exciting opportunities lie ahead for us as a football club and they want to be a part of it. What's probably happened so early in a year? It's quite unusual for Adelaide to do things in a pre-season. Oh, I guess we just want to, they'll no doubt in list management have a structure and who they, there's a lot of players I guess out of contract each year and a strategy to, to how they go about re-signing each of them, so I guess it's just part of their process to, to work through um, the players that they think they need to tick off on first. It's an often asked question, but sorry mate. I was just saying, you're happy to get it out of the way before the season starts as well, so it's not something you're thinking about during, during the year? Yeah, I am. Um, I, and a manager came to me about a month back and said, um, would we like to start talking to the club? And it was done you know, relatively quickly, so that was um, pleasing from that regard, and I guess it just allows the footy season to to, to kick off now with nothing, you know, no other thoughts lying over my head in regards to contract situations, but yeah, it was just um, pleasing that we could get it done before round one. So I'll be asked a question, I know you don't know, openly talk about pay packets inside a change room, but the fact that the, the, the length of the tenure, three year deals and a few blokes are getting them, is it a talking point among a few blokes now that let's stay together and there's a little bit of conversion to other blokes to maybe hang around? Yeah, there is. There's certainly, um, I guess, when uh, three years, a long term deal, I suppose, but players want to. To, um, that, that's, that signals to me anyway that players want to be a part of, of where we're going and you know, it provides them security off the field, I'm sure, in a, in a financial sense to a certain degree for a few years. But um, I guess it more shows me that they want to be a part of the culture that we've got here at the footy club. And I know that the environment that we've got here now that Sando's created and the players have really um, come to, that, um, it means that they want to, want to stay around. Has that been pushed by what happened last year? Say that again, sorry? Has that been pushed by what happened last year with one player? Um, I guess that uh, was a clear example to the playing group about um, feelings that occur when you don't want to be a part of the group and when you, you show that. So I guess it, um, in, the, in the Kurt Tippett case, wasn't, wasn't handled well from his point of view and the players certainly reacted accordingly to that um, and felt they were let down in, uh, in many ways there. So I guess um, they've seen ways that they shouldn't do it uh, if they choose to, to leave our system. But... Um, uh, I don't think we'll have that case to, to deal with any time soon. The play, players that we've got all want to be here, and that's the most important thing. We want players that want to play for the Adelaide Footy Club. Just on that, uh, with Kurt and not handling it properly, have you had much contact with him since or spoken to him about, hey, mate, you could have done this, you could have come to me? Or? I certainly have spoken to him a while back now um, you know, about uh, ways that I, I thought um, it could have been handled better, but um, that's well and truly in the past now, and we're just looking forward to getting on to, you know, to our season. More importantly, what, what lies ahead for us as a footy club. Sorry? Did he acknowledge that, that it wasn't the best way to go about it? Oh, I think he, he probably does now, yeah, he probably understands that um, he could have done things differently. I don't know, I'm not inside Kurt's head, but um, I dare say it would be a thought that passes mine. What about the Bombers? What do you make of the whole scenario with the Bombers this Friday night? I mean, obviously, <coughs> monstrous time for them. I'd say it's a good time or a bad time to play this round one, but what do you make of the whole circus around Essendon? Yeah, there's, there'll certainly be a fair bit of emotion around uh, the Essendon Footy Club. Um, some people could argue there could be some motion around us with the tumultuous off-season that we and pre-season that we had as well. But um, look, it's, it's like with a milestone game. I think the emotion lasts for the first maybe five minutes of a, of a game. Certainly in the build-up it's there. But um, it certainly shouldn't be something that drives you, as a, drives you as a football club or as a team. 
and I, I don't think that'll be the case for us this weekend and we'll certainly be prepared to be playing a, a very fit, very well, well organised and uh, ready to go Essendon side so we're expecting a um, you know, very tough encounter. Hey, after that sort of pre-season that we can't get a handle on, mm -hmm. why, why would we believe that? Brenton Sanderson, well, I think you guys are actually hungry to do something this year. I guess that, that can be sometimes hard to... Um, Recognised from from the outside, but internally um, we've we've trained harder this pre-season. We've got our bodies in better shape. Um, the attitude and the hunger of the group is is still certainly there and burning to to improve. Um, and we've I think further developed in our culture as well. So those things um, more or less recognised internally. We feel them growing as a playing group. Um, while our uh, performances have been criticised to a certain extent, we certainly know that um, we're very well prepared going into to round one and, and have every confidence that um, we can perform at the level that we need to. Do you think you're going to be the hunted team this year because you were a top four, actually really a top two side last year? I guess that's uh, something that we have we haven't spoken about with the boys, or we, I suppose we have, we, we recognise that the expectation will be there for us this year and that provides another challenge for the playing group. Last year we set out to, I guess, re try and re-establish the football club as being a competitive unit, uh, a team that, um, you know, other teams uh, respect um, and I think we made some inroads into that last year with the way that we played our footy um, and the way that we finished off our year. Uh, in saying that though, that's only one year and I guess the, the club that we want to become uh, needs a sustained effort over um, you know, years on end. So um, the playing group, as we've said many times, under no illusions that it's, it's just going to happen for us or last year was a great year and we'll rest our hats on that. We certainly um, know that we need to knuckle down now and and make sure that this year and the years to come um, are consistent years and, and what we want them to be. Acknowledging that criticism over the pre-season, like you just mentioned, and the, the tumultuous pre-season, is that sort of us against them mentality pretty healthy for a new club, do you think? Oh, it can be. Um, you can use um, criticism in any way um, that you want um, to try and drive you, but I'd be disappointed if we needed criticism from, from outside or from even to an extent internally to, to drive you as a footy team um, or as an individual player because um, every player that we've got is a, com a competitive person and they, they want to win and they want to get the best out of themselves so naturally that you know internal desire that they've got will drive them um, more than what any criticism outside would so um, they probably more often than not players turn a blind eye to it and focus on what's really important to them which is internal expectations and and uh, I guess uh, what we expect of each other. It, it can be. It, um, I mean, it certainly is. It's, it's, it's an exciting week for the playing group to, you know, for us to kick off the season uh, Friday night. I'm, you know, really hoping that we get a, a blockbuster crowd here to, to support us to kick off the AFL season too. Is a great honour for the footy club, and uh, the boys will uh, certainly be looking forward to it, um, as we should. But um, we can't get too worked up about it now. It's only early in the week, but uh, it's, it's great to have footy back and to be in the season proper now. So hopefully our Supporters come come out in force on Friday night as the 19th man and support us well. Do you notice that there are extra nerves among the potential debutants around the change room training that sort of thing? Uh, not yet, um, but you see it um, even during the season when, when players are on edge and they're close to, to getting a game. So, um, look, I hope some guys do get opportunities this week and no doubt they will. Um, and it's, a, and it's an ex exciting time for them. I mean, we, we've got to embrace the build-up that we do have to round one because, as I said, it's, it's an exciting time, but... Um, at the same time, you've got to try and keep a level head about it and uh, just go about your normal preparation as best as you can. Have you coaches sounded you out about who you reckon, what you're yeah. oh, well, we, we do, Hushins, and we're not on a match committee or anything like that, but we, um, as a leadership group, uh, do talk about um, you know, players, where they're at and where we see them fitting into our 22. So that's just a natural um, chat that we have week in, week out, even throughout the pre-season. Yeah. Crouchy looks good to go. Do you think you agree with that? Oh, Crouchy's had a has, has had a really good pre-season. Um, he showed in in games that he's certainly capable of handling uh, the level um, of intensity required. Um, there's been a lot spoken about Brad, and he's got um, he's going to have some some expectations to live up to. But you know he's a, he's a really hungry uh, young guy that um, is going to keep working hard not only this year but for years to come. So you, I mean we're nowhere near seeing the best of Brad Crouch yet, but he's certainly. Uh, you know, put his best foot forward throughout the pre-season and um, if he gets a chance on Friday night, he's, he's deserved that spot. Hey, Jenkins is the man for that spot next to Walker in the forward line. Is that Jenkins? 
Yeah, I think, uh, again, Josh has had opportunities um, you know, throughout the pre-season, which he's made the most of. So um, I think, you know, at the moment, he's, he's probably been the one that's made the most of that opportunity, but we'll have to wait and see come, come Friday night. But, um, you know, it's good to see uh, our big guys really fighting for position at the moment uh, up in the forward line and, and, and down back. By no means are those positions settled. I think Sander would agree on that, but um, it's good to see guys certainly jumping at the opportunity. Oh, not at all. No, I think it's the way that the AFL has decided to, to set out the fixtures and we're lucky enough to, to kick off the season with um, a Friday night game here in Adelaide, which is you know, great for us and great for the crowd. It means we get a, a national audience for our first game, which, um, which is great. Is there a sense of relief that you're finally playing after that tumultuous pre-season? Well, I think there is uh, after any pre-season, to be honest. The boys are... After about Christmas, they're just hanging out for games to start and then once the games, the pre-season NAB Cup starts, they just want to want the season proper to, to get underway so um, you know we've made it and uh, we're looking forward to, to what lies ahead now it's going to be a you know last year was relatively uh, you know straightforward for us in the, in the sense that we didn't have we were lucky with injuries and that we we had uh, you know good form throughout the whole year and you know hopefully this this year uh, is the same for us but there may well be challenges on the way and the, the group will be well prepared for that based on you know the adversity that we faced in the, the previous years the tumultuous off-season that we've had, um, but yeah, we, we won't know what lies ahead for us, only this Friday night is as, as far ahead as we're going to look and embrace it, enjoy it, and um, make it out there. Nathan, why didn't the go home take with you, particularly when you had a brother playing mm. at the club? Um, I guess I look at it sometimes in, in a different sense. I do certainly still miss home, and I know when my football career is finished, I will head back to Perth and, and live with my family, but um, for me, if if I was growing up and someone told me I was going to be doing my dream job and it meant for me having to move interstate, um, I certainly would have jumped at that or move overseas, whatever it might be. I think people sometimes forget that, um, you know, to do your dream job you might have to relocate and it might mean some, some tough times. But, um, you know, our playing group here at the moment, I think we've got over half the group from interstate. So that helps us, I think, in uh, if we all um, agree to hang around and uh, make sure that we... You know, make success count. I think it means a lot more too when you've had to go through some hardship of moving away from home, deal with homesickness, um, adapt to a whole new lifestyle in a different state. Um, it will really mean a lot. And um, I've, got, I've been really lucky. I've had the full support of my family the whole way through. Um, so um, that won't change and I'm really looking forward to you know, the years ahead here at Adelaide. Do you think you'll still be the captain at the end of your three, new three-year deal? Well, that's, that's too far ahead to forecast that. I'm not sure about that. Just because there's a few emerging yeah, there are, and that's that's a, a great position for us to be in. I mean, I could rattle off four or five guys now that um, would would jump at the chance and be um, you know ready to ready to, to lead the side. So that um, that they'll no doubt keep developing um, over the, over the years to come, and and whatever decisions Sando um, and management decide, to make, then that'll be fully supported by myself too, and no doubt the rest of the playing group. The captaincy is that sort of play a factor in, in staying here in South Australia? Because I mean, Patrick Dangerfield's going to be in that seat. Yeah, I guess that it's, it's um, you know, I am very honoured and, and humbled to be the leader of the football club and it um, means a great deal to me, but um, for me, I, I see myself as no different to, to the rest of the playing group. I'm simply a representative of them that, um, you know, speaks to the coaches a bit more and, and has some, I suppose, more responsibility to do on game day and around the football club, but um, what um, what is most important is for me is... And I think you know it's important why I lead the way in, in signing a you know a long term a longer term deal to to signify to the boys that I'm I'm keen to hang around, which um, hopefully they didn't doubt anyway. But um, hopefully it can set the way for for other guys to follow suit as well. Nathan, obviously last preseason you had a lot to take in, a lot to learn. The new coach, what's the couple of things that you've really honed in on? I think you sort of improved this preseason as a team. Um, I think from from last year we obviously identified we need to. Um, I mean, to be honest, not a lot has changed over the pre-season. We've tried to fine-tune a few areas of our game that um, we need to do a bit better, particularly in the finals games. We saw um, probably some of our KPIs weren't at the level that we needed them to be at, so under intensity we needed to, to keep training them. So we've tried to do that throughout the pre-season, is, is handling um, high-press press situations even better again. So I think the group's well equi equipped for that. Um, there's been talk about the defensive side of our game with our, with our tackling and, and pressure on the ball, which we have put a lot of work into. So 
Um, I've got no doubt that'll hold us in good stead for the season cup coming too. So, um, yeah, it's a bit hard to, to focus in on one or two things that we've really worked on over the pre-season because it's been, in all honesty, a combination of a lot of things. But um, I've got no doubt we're well prepared. You had that great pre-season competition last year and kind of rode that into the mm. season. Have you got any concerns about the patchy form that you've taken from the NAPCA? No, I don't. And the, the playing group, um, I sense, don't have those concerns as well because, because I said, we know we're better prepared than we were last year in terms of our physical state, the way that we've trained out on, on the training track. We're stronger, we're fitter, um, you know, we're faster. So I think that holds us in, in real good stead. It's exactly where the fitness staff wanted us to be and Sando and the coaching group are really happy with where we're at as a um, you know, football preparation point of view. So um, yeah, that um, should give and does give us confidence going into the season.